might remember the first time I used a motorized scooter. I was in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, and they were suddenly everywhere. It was really the only practical way to get around, and it was incredibly fun. And with the way I was riding it, I don't know how I got out of there in one piece. But there's more to this micro-mobility movement than just having a fun toy. Today, we're talking with a company that is changing the game with a better vehicle that will open the market to a wider range of users. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Chris Brandt here with Sundish Patel. Welcome to another future podcast. Today, we're talking with Jez Williman, CEO of personal EV startup DFly. DFly has built a new kind of personal electric vehicle that puts design, function, performance, and safety into one vehicle and makes it as fun as skateboarding, but practical enough to be part of your daily commute. So let's talk with Jez about why he created DFly, where the market is going, and how this amazing vehicle works. Welcome, Jez. Chris, great to be with you. Thanks so much for the invite, and Jess, you too. Uh, really uh, uh, appreciate you, the uh, the invite and glad to tell you more about DeFi. We've been looking at awesome. the videos on the website and we're just like, you know, just itching to get one because they look <laughs> really, really cool. Um, and I know they're going to be available soon. Um, but, you know, before you get it, we you tell us all about it. So why don't you tell us sort of the, the history of how you came up with DFly and, and why you created DFly? Yeah, so look, the, 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 the history of DFly, it's a, it's a five-year-old project. Um, the inspiration uh, really came from, uh, from freedom, from access, from, from micro-sizing, from, from, from cool. Um, and from my experiences, there was nothing out there that had got that ground up design. You know, the, 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 the product was... Uh, pretty mainstream and there was a lot of safety issues in my mind a lot of practicality issues in my mind and there was a lot of let's say everyone was a passive user of the product and, and that sort of enjoyment and fun and sport element didn't didn't really get into it and I wanted right. to to do something that was completely new I know that this was kind of born out of the idea that like you know you wanted a, a vehicle uh to ride when you had an injury and you tried the scooters which were kind of just retrofitted you know kick scooters uh and and, and you look for something better right yeah look you know i I've, I've i've been in uh uh endurance athlete for, for for many many years but one thing that i didn't know was that i had an autoimmune disease um and that and that disease um actually was sort of attacking my joints so that, so i was getting injured a, a lot and recovery time you know was was uh, extended always. I didn't really know why. Um, and, and I reached this point where I'd had uh, some operations on my knees. Uh, I spent some time in a wheelchair. I was on crutches and I needed to get around vertically. I couldn't, I couldn't sit down in a car. Um, and, and I thought, okay, let's, let's, there must be something out there for me, you know? And, and I thought, well, I don't want to get a typical, um, invalid type vehicle because again, that they, they didn't really exist if you were stood up. Right. Um, and, and so I, I, I found some, uh, some electric scooters, um, uh, before anybody knew or had heard of what an electric scooter was, you know, that, 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 let's be honest. And, and I bought probably about 15 different products and, and, and I, and I tried them. Um, and every single one of them, I have to say for me personally was a disaster, you know, and I, I, I you know, sort of reflect on this, okay, there must be something better. And I tried electric other vehicles, one wheels and, and, you know, all sorts of other uh, vehicles. And again, for me, having come off the back of injuries, uh, that wasn't really the, the, the best solution. So I said, you know what, with all my product design experience, let's design something yeah. from the ground up. Let's, let's do, let's give something to the world that <laughs> is new and innovative and, uh, really, really sets the genre off to something um, that's a bit special. So let's talk about, you know, like, like the Dragonfly itself, the, the main DFly product. Um, you started off with, you know, designing something from the ground up. This is not a, a kind of a class of vehicle that existed before, really. And no. and, and I think, uh, you know, a co one interesting thing I th that you did I, I want to talk about is you went out to Indiegogo and you didn't go out to Indiegogo necessarily to get the funding but you went there to get the advice. If we start with the design itself, you know, yeah. uh, you know, for me, starting from the ground up was was all about that stability first of all, and we take the inspiration from. So of course, the inspiration has to come from the automotive world, you know, because yes. that's that's four wheels, and and there's a lot of uh, tech in full size vehicles, and and so uh, I took a lot of that base design uh, to bring into the uh, to the Dragonfly, and you know, put 
independent damp sprung suspension, uh, a lot of carbon fiber, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, um, you know titanium forgings and, and aerospace um, aluminum and, and 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 this kind of thing. But also the you, the you can really is, see some of the automotive tech in there when you, this is this it's got an advanced looking suspension system. It's sort of a combination of. Uh, you know, a, a full-on, you know, track vehicle with an off-road vehicle and miniaturized. Um, and then, um, you know, we put, in terms of the electronics, we've got full, you know, camera capability. We've got um, all of the aspects that you would have on a full-size vehicle with, you know, your, all of your telemetry and, and uh, uh, navigational uh, elements and turn signals and, and braking lights and, um, and reverse gears and, uh, you know, all the things that, that you would have on a, on a – because for me, that was important. You know, if, yeah. if we're going to change hearts and minds, we've got to get a vehicle that um, has that – uh, all of that, the, the practicality and the fun and the engagement of the body, etc. Um, but yeah, to your point, um, once I'd got the, the 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 design all laid out and and we were sort of in that um, re, you know prototyping stage when we've been through uh, you know twenty or more iterations of the product to, to hone everything, the thing that was required next was that market feedback. You know, we wanted yeah. that information, that draw from consumers to say. Um, you know, is this a waste of time, or is, or or is this really something that people um, yeah. can connect with? And and the reaction we got was huge. You know, we were uh, we were the fastest um, sort of growing Indiegogo campaign. Um, you know, in history for the first sort of you know few hours that we went live, and and and, and you know, and, and the comments that we got back um, was was just staggeringly positive. And yeah. um, even though you know, there's been you know, there's been a few bumps in the ground as as, as we put in our manufacturing processes. Um, but, um, but, but generally, you know, everybody has just been incredibly supportive and said, oh my God, I just can't wait to go and it's going to change my life for whatever reason, you know? And, and, uh, and I think that's, you know, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously hugely proud of, of every, everybody at DFLY, you know, we've, we've got a, we've got a great team and, and it, it's not one person, of course, you know, with anything, it's not one person, it's, it, it's the team. I think the world is ready for something new, you know, and, and I think the, um, all generations now, um, are accepting that um, sustainability and, and carbon neutrality and not taking a huge V8 everywhere is is the solution. And, and if I can, because if it's only me in a, in a vehicle that can take, you know, eight people, um, it makes sense that I have a vehicle that is designed for that single person, you know. Right. Um, and when I look at uh, you know, look at some of the use cases and so on, some of the conversations that we that we that we have with with people in some of the verticals outside of the of the of the you know consumer market. And when we can in one parking lot, we can have fifty of our vehicles yeah. you know, against one vehicle that can carry maybe four or six people. It makes sense to 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 have our vehicles around and um, and people. You know, it's that ear to ear smile that you get from from riding our vehicle that is that is is the is the real sort of you know game changer because they have that 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 fun aspect of the ride um, and and the safety and the feeling of they've done something positive um, uh, you know, to the for the world um, and and I think that's you know that that's important. Uh, one, I love the fact that you're getting rid of some of the traffic on the streets. So yeah, that that's 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 a big plus in my book. Um, but you know, like I think that um, when you look at the practicality of using you know a personal vehicle like this, um, the scooters are just not fitting the bill. You know, they're they're not they're not necessarily safe for everybody to use. There's nowhere to store things. They um, you know, they're a little squirrely, you know, in certain environments. Absolutely. But you're kind of changing that game. If people have got to go somewhere and it's a long distance and they've got to travel 200 miles and they're going to another city and then they arrive. But when they arrive, they don't have to drive around looking for parking. They just, they park up, maybe slightly out of town. They open their trunk, they get out their, 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 their dragonfly. And they have the freedom to then put on their, their maybe maybe they're going to meet some friends for a coffee, go to the gym. They're going to they've got their laptop, but they you know all of those things they load on, and they're free to to to, to travel around the city. But as as you rightly pointed out, they don't have the stresses and, and anxieties of the traffic. Right. They're obviously safe because of our you know stability and four wheels and 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 so on. But they're going to arrive there, and it's like, hey Charlie, I'm you know great to meet you for the meeting, and da, 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 you know. 
and uh, said, oh, you know, you're very, having a great day. Oh, yeah, no, I'm having a great day today. And, uh, and that kind of, um, uh, you know, exuberance that the, that, that the vehicle gives you, I think, is, uh, is great. And I, I, I've worked in one of the global companies that I built in the past was to do with crowd control. And, and that was lots of people going through airports or banks or retail and frustrated by the fact that they, were, uh, they had to wait. And it's the same with traffic. You know, people get that anxiety. They're looking at the watch. They think, oh, am I going to get to the office or the coffee or the restaurant or whatever it is on time? And that's what um, the freedom of our vehicle is bringing to uh, to everybody. With the other scooters, there's nowhere to put anything. And I think one of the things that's kind of revolutionary about what you're doing and I, that I really like is the, the idea of customizability that you can add luggage to this thing. And there's a lot of accessorization that can go on, but, but beyond that, there's a bigger mission for you in that, which is sort of the repairability aspect of this. Could you speak to that a little bit? As you said, um, when I, when I experienced it and, 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 and the two wheel, uh, uh, product, um, you know, you'd have to take a backpack, you know, and you'd load up right. your backpack. But of course, as you lean and you, you and you steer, your center of gravity is moving. And, and, and if the road surface is a bit sketchy um, and perhaps your backpack moves to one side slightly, you get thrown off balance. And it's like, oh, hang, hang on a minute. You know, the heart, heartbeat needs to calm down a little bit. You know, um, So I didn't want that. I, and, I, and, and that's why I designed um, very unique um, luggage pieces. So there's a, there's um, we've got we've got. Um, various accessories and racks that, that attach to the product that give you various levels and volumes of, of, uh, of luggage. But of course, they all nest into each other. So even if you've got both full packs, one nests into the other, you've got little zippers that, that pull out um, uh, connections so you can throw it over your back. And if you want to, uh, to, to, to walk somewhere fi- finally after you've parked the, uh, the dragonfly, um, and we've got other racks and, and uh, you know, further storage capability for cold boxes and <laughs> you name it we've got a we've got a portfolio of, 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 of innovations that was that was important but but separate from that going back to this the full vehicle of course when you've got a full, full-size vehicle what do you do you know when it when it breaks down you take it to the garage and they'll fix it for you now with this the the, the two-wheel vehicles at the moment there is no uh, there's no ability for most people to be able to fix them it just doesn't exist Right. Um, you can't even change a tire. You can't remove a wheel. So they become, you uh, know, a lot of instances they become, you know, grandfill, and and that's awful for for the environment. So I wanted everybody to be able to be able to interchange their battery very easily, very quickly. Then with the, the, that battery can be recycled. Um, and um, as far as the tire is concerned, I designed a wheel that splits on on at the edge of one side, um, and within about 15, 20 seconds, you can remove a. Uh, a ring on the side of that wheel, slide off your tire, put a new tire on, um, uh, re- return that that ring, or put in an inner tube um, if you uh, if you just want a sh- you know quick fix, um, and you're, you know, put a put a uh, small small pump, um, and um, and away you go again. You know, so so if you're in the field, if you're you know you're you're not left stranded. Right. So everything is serviceable. So you get a full tool roll. Um, so every nut and bolt that, that is needed to adjust uh, and personalize for you and your your ride style and your suspension setup, et cetera, um, is, uh, is, is all there. And I've done, you know, I've done how to videos for all of those things. So everybody can uh, uh, get to see uh, me, unfortunately, for them and, and doing all these things live. And, and believe me, uh, it, 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 we've, we've designed it so it's really there's there's no sort of engineering degree required this is very very simple stuff that literally anybody can do in moments which is which for me was important again another, another big pillar of the design i think that's a great choice you made i think that's um going to really make people happy over the long term um but you know one of the things that's also really interesting about your product that i think is very unique is this sort of 3d steering that you've got going on here and i mentioned earlier that you know you have a suspension that looks like it could be in a you know, a Porsche. Um, yes. <laughs> but but uh, could you could you talk a little bit about like the kind of engineering that went in there and just why that you know you talk about that ear to ear smile you know why that matters. Yeah. The steering, obviously, you know, again, it's a globally patented, unique system that has never been done before. And whenever you conceive something like that, um, of course, you can conceive it. And then delivering it suddenly becomes rather more challenging, <laughs> uh, especially at such a miniaturized scale. Um, yeah. But but I you know I I love kite surfing and and uh, and for me 
um, I had this this concept of when you're flying a kite, when when you're when you're rolling a kite in in the air uh, to, to 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 set it in in the wind, um, you have this sort of figure of eight movement on the on the kite bar, and I wanted to bring that to the to the to the road surface. So I, I sort of had this idea that you would sort of could roll and your body be engaged and integrated with the with the vehicle, and that was the first two dimensions. So we've got this, we've got a, a, a roll, a lean to steer, and a twist to steer. Uh, but the third dimension comes from the fact that you can put heel and toe into the deck. So once you get a bit, of, a bit, a bit of comfort with that, you can you then realise that oh, hang on, if I put a little bit more weight on the left or put a little bit more weight on the right, um, then um, I get my third dimension kicking in, and then I've got my four wheel steering, and then suddenly you're doing these super tight turns. You go oh wow, where did that come from? You know, and it's like, oh, wow, you know, and then people, you know, you see people in, in a matter of moments, you know, they sort of started going along and they go, oh, this is, this is, wow, this is different. And then, you know, and, and then all of a sudden after sort of five or 10 minutes go, oh, if I put my hip into it, oh gosh, you know, look at me, you know, and they sort of have that, pro, you know, they have that pro, uh, pro sport sort of feel, uh, you know, Red, Red Bull style uh, of sort of carving going on and thinking, wow, you know, I'm, I'm like a, uh, you know, pro, pro skateboarder here uh, with that being a pro skateboarder you know but getting that that feedback which as i said gives gives you that ear to ear smile which is which is very cool well i know sundish is a pro skateboarder so he's already put oh, in a well, pre-order there we go. So. Oh, so, oh sundish <laughs> you, you are going to be uh in your element and uh in, in, and enjoying this vehicle i know i will be and i just can't wait to get it my my first question is how if i buy one today how long will it take for me to get it if you buy one today we, we, we start shipping in april so the, the orders that we've already got um, start shipping in in uh, in early April. Um, so we're starting to open up um, slots now to the end of April um, uh, to get to get oh. delivery. So we've got um, we've got containers that, that are going to be stored in both um, the east coast and the west coast. Uh, and we so we're trying to offer a, a range of deliveries for for uh, for the you know in the entire US. So so you can you can get it delivered at a, at a um, at, a, at a reasonable price in in a very short period period of time, and we we might be having some uh, uh, zero shipping cost specials coming to start with. So uh, watch out oh, that's for that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll pay for the shipping. It's fine. I want this so bad. Um, so you so you've talked about this amazing suspension. You've talked about this amazing virtual experience. This software that you've built into it. I got to think the battery engineering was a bit complicated too. Like what part of the design from an engineering perspective was the trickiest? The mechanical engineering of, of translating the movements of both twist and lean and the deck and integrating those. You can imagine what you don't see. Um, within the the bulkhead and the uh, the carbon fiber, which is only sort of you know 12 millimeters uh, um, deep, th- there's a lot of incredible engineering that goes on within that synchro mesh um, and and four dimensional um, uh, um, intersections of, of of components um, that really are you know if, if people took it apart or, or or you know came to see the the, the parts made in the factory, you then really see. Um, the, the preciseness of the ink, 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 ink to meshes of, of these linkages uh, that connect all those things together. I mean, incredibly precise, incredibly highly tolerant. That is, is, has been tricky. I think the other part about um, the, 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 uh, the battery and the electronics is just making everything work together. You know, you've got two controllers because we've got two wheels um, and there's, there's a, just a lot of stuff going on. We've obviously got to bring power to the back for the lights and the turn signals, etc. cetera. Um, and then where the, where the battery sits, there's a lot of cables going up and down uh, because we've got, a, you know, we've got a, we've got a, um, a video screen. Um, we've got, you know, cameras, um, you know, all of these, these electronics going in and, and up and down through a very small, tight space. So, um, so there's, a, there's a lot of sort of practical elements that, that come into the engineering and, and design. And we've got, there's a couple of speakers inside as well, because we've got unique sounds. Um, so when you turn the vehicle on, it, 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 you know, because we're creating kind of, as I said, completely new genre, completely new vehicle. I wanted new sounds too. Why wouldn't you, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, of, of, yeah. of course, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a startup sound. Uh, there's a new electronic um, horn that we designed, and there's a there's a uh, a reversing uh, sound that is. Uh, we we got into the sound studio, and it, it's it's kind of 
um, somewhere between a, a, a V8 and a, a helicopter and uh, a, a spaceship, you know, move, merged into one sound. And, and you'll see it when you, when you have your product and you'll turn on, you'll go, oh, oh that's, that's cool. You know, cause, and again, uh, deliberately so, so when people are out and about and they turn the vehicle on or off, you know, um, at the very least, or yeah. they, they reverse or they, they sound the horn and people go, well, oh, what, you know, what, what's that all about? You know, and, and that, that's cool. Uh, so there's, there's, there's some sort of uh, design to that as well beyond, uh, you, you know, just having the, the cool sounds. Just like Chris, my first introduction was South by Southwest in Austin. I think it was 2019. And it was like those little lime things, those little birds or whatever it was. And I remember people telling me, they're like, hey, be careful on those. (laughs) Because the amount of people going into the ER, like there's people are losing teeth left and right. So I started, you know, I was like, wow, at first, like this is really cool. But then I see all these people going to bars, drinking, (laughs) and then getting on those things. And I'm thinking... This and riding them this down the highway, might I add? Riding them down the highway. Yeah. No, no, no good choice. Yeah, so, so, there. yeah South South I mean, that's, yeah. that's the problem, isn't it? You know, it, it still does require people to make sensible choices and driving any vehicle, as right. we know, whether it's a bicycle, um, you know, if, if you, if you, uh, you know, drink alcohol and, and you, uh, you know, you walk home, uh, you know, you can get into trouble there too, you know, so um, it, it, it's that. not <laughs> that, that under those circumstances, it's not suddenly, you know, that the, the genre that we sit in um, is, is, com- you know, completely unsafe compared to, compared to others there's um you know and and in reality whilst we've put as much safety tech on there i mean i mean our camera system actually um is designed for adac so so what we could do is have collision um um, prevention technology on board so so in other words um before an accident is, is it happens the, the 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 vehicle could sense an accident and slow you down automatically um, but again, there comes that point where you've got to say, how much tech are people prepared to pay for right. um, in in a relatively small vehicle versus you know other things? Now, we we deliberately have have, have got a package that is um, you know super exciting and 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 you know high tech in terms of the materials as the vehicle, the steer, you know everything is 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 built in there, and we've tried to you know package it up at a at a price that's uh, commercially reasonable. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, particularly in, you know, in, in uh, consumer uh, markets, uh, don't always necessarily appreciate what goes into uh, you know creating these things in the in the in the first place because you know they, they buy an incredibly high tech um, you know washing machine or something and and uh, you, you know and it didn't cost, you know, it only cost them I don't know five hundred bucks or something and I think well you know that yeah. it always requires yeah. people to take uh, to take the right choices but we we like to think that we've done as much as we could yeah. uh, to, to to make people safe because obviously on that footprint of four wheels um, there isn't a two wheel vehicle that can come and touch that simply because. Right. Uh, you know, you can stand freely on it. You know, that, there's that, there's the first testament. You know, you 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 you, you can't. You don't have to balance as such. Um, you know, you can just stand on the vehicle and uh, and, and 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 ride it. So, uh, and of course, if you if you if you go through a uh, you know some water, you know that's not going to going to change anything. If you go on a dirt track, yeah, it's waterproof, it's, right? Yeah, you know, again, you know, because we we elevated the battery out of the deck. Um, you, you know, so so again, we wanted to. Uh, make it practical in all weathers. Uh, we've got the option for snow tires, so if you want to uh, to take it on snow and ice roads, uh, you know that's that, no problem. And I mean, I, I at my home when it snowed um, in December, I was I I, I mean, <laughs> I just went outside to say let's, let's just you know do some trials and testing and so on. And of course, you're sliding the rear end around and and just having so much fun. Um, but with, you've got that stability, so it's 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 it's. Uh, um, it's just an incredibly fun, fun, fun vehicles. Can you take the, uh, the vehicle and fold it and, and can you like put it into like your trunk? And if so, like how much does it, does it weigh about? Obviously the, the important aspect for us was about its footprint. Um, so the idea is yes, you fold, you can fold it. Uh, absolutely. But then you can stand it on its end. So, um, so if you're in an apartment, um, the footprint is about the same size of a size 12, pair, 12 pairs of pair of shoes, um, that, you know, on the floor. So if you've got 
a size 12 pair of shoes and then you put the, you can put a dragonfly <laughs> next to it uh, and it will stand in that same floor space so that was in wow. that was in, in, important because everything else yeah it, it, you know they may fall but they still lie on the on the ground so you've still got a you know an amount of space that it that it's going to going to take um, and then, yeah, look, you, you know, pr- pretty much most trunks, uh, you'll be able to, 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 to pick it up and, and throw it in the trunk. I thought with myself about, about what the battery size should be, you know, and, and uh, because there's always sort of, you know, comments about, you know, range anxiety and, 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 and so on. So I wanted to, to, to put a battery in there that had enough juice uh, to give people that you know, depending on on terrain and weather and 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 the the uh, uh, rolling resistance on the road and and obviously you know wind and so on, you get sort of 40, 50 miles of of, of range. You, you know, they may only have to charge it once a week, so that does push the weight up a little bit. Um, you know, we're we're in that sort of 85 pounds uh, type sort of uh, 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 range, 80 pounds range. Um, so uh, so it's not. You know, it's not the lightest, but um, it, it's it's almost impossible um, to keep the you know the weight and the strength at the same time. So you, have, you just, it's just a balance. You know, totally. um, we're 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 about fifty pounds without the without the battery in. So if you sort of think your battery out, put that in. You know, um, and then and then and then picked up the vehicle. Um, you know, it's, it's pra- you're practical. You know, you can pick it up. Um, uh, you know, readily as a you know re- you know as a human being, it's it, it's human size. Um, so uh, so yeah, throw it in your throw it in your trunk, no problem. Well, like everything, it's a it's a balance, right? You know, you you want you want yeah. you want range, but you want it light. You want you know stability, but you want it small. You know, there's a compromise with all those things, isn't there? You know, and and um, uh, of course, you know, if, if I said to you. Well, how much does two two wheel scooters weigh? Um, you know, you and you put two of those, and you picked up two of those. They're going to be heavier than we are, you know. And some of right. them with two wheels, um, you know, weigh you know 150 pounds. So, right. Um, right. You, you know, so we optimized as much as we could, um, but still maintained some of the the, um, the you know this uh, technology that we wanted to to to, to keep. Um, so people can, you know, they could commute on at the, you know, during the week. They can go single track at the week at the weekends, and it becomes that, um, you know, sport utility vehicle for them to have, you know, fun on and um, actually get a great workout um, with at the, at the at the weekends. And maybe they change their tires over and very uh, adjustable and and uh, flexible in in that way. I, I see a new esport coming. You know, that's in the back of our minds. That's why, you know, we was when, when we were originally creating names and and uh, you, obviously the, the, the dragonfly brand itself and, and the name of the of the product came out of that that movement of a dragonfly the way it sort of ebbs and mo- moves yeah. and weaves and and uh, the fact that there are so many varieties of dragonflies it's got four and, wheels, and so on. like the wheels and, yeah exactly you know, all of the as, you know all of those aspects of, of the dragonfly sort of fit, fitted um and um and and hence the name and hence d fly and and you know it all it all sort of uh, connected into the uh um in, into the brand there this this personal electric vehicle market sort of the micro mobility market um you know we saw like a little bit of a start in that direction um but this seems like a kind of a a, a real product to advance that whole market could you could you tell me where you think this market's headed huge growth i mean there's no question as i said the, the horse has bolted in in terms of acceptance but i think um w- one of our pillars um of of reflection um was was being able to provide a product that was um, accessible by everybody. You know, it didn't matter your 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 level, your skill, your anxiety of 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 um, uh, of balance. Um, it was it was a vehicle that was available for everybody. And also, right. there's that factor of of cool. You know, for me, when I look at the you know sort of PEV market, you know, and I look, I see some of the products being developed. And obviously, I've been doing product design for for 35 years, and I think. Wow, you, you know, you you've created a, a a product that might fit a genre, but when you look at it, I, I have you know heart attacks of looking at some of the design <laughs> because they, I just can't imagine people using it because ultimately right. humans like to be cool. You know, they like to look cool <laughs> on when they when they're doing something. There's a reason people buy their full size vehicles that suits right. them. It might have been the styling or the color or the whatever, but 
they, they feel cool when they're riding it. And to me, I think that's when, um, you know, whilst there's been a huge acceptance, I think if we're going to get that, um, um, you know, more, more, more global, more uh, complete acceptance of, of change and not using full-size vehicles for short uh, uh, single-person journeys, we needed to create that, that, that cool product. So I think uh, the market's still going to grow massively as, as, as um, you know, the costs of, um, uh, of, of, of vehicles, uh, you know, continue to increase. And we've got, you know, electric vehicles, great, but we don't want to be building huge electric vehicles because if we carry on at the rate of manufacture of huge vehicles, we run out of parking and, and you know, the streets are blocked enough as they are. And, uh, right. you know, there's obviously there is future tech coming that will enable you to sort of order a vehicle on your app and it will come and pick you up and probably there's no driver and, and so on. And those things are going to be coming in the decades to come. Um, but let's have something now that, that starts to bridge the gap um, and um, uh, you know, it gives people a reason to be excited about going on their short journeys. And hopefully that will motivate them uh, to, uh, to take different choices. I know you're in the heat of like getting it together and, and launching this product right now. <laughs> so this question is going to be a little bit like, well, what are you, what are you, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> but, and I know you're out in, you're in LA right now doing a bunch of shoots and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But, but What's next for D DFly? Where do you see this going? What what kind of uh, you know, initiatives are you going to be looking at next? For me, as a product designer, you know, the problem is is, is that I, my brain doesn't stop. You know, I, I I sleep for about three hours a night, and and uh, uh, I'm just constantly sort of uh, have this. Uh, a troubled mind of creativity that, that just sort of keeps coming, and then my team say, "Jason, hold on, hold on." You know. Um, so, so uh, one of the things that I, that I wanted to um, again start moving us into um, for the for the future, at least having um, uh, the, the, the the possibility to of, of choices in the future. Um, is you know we're set with lithium iron right now. Lithium iron is is the the, the power source that we've got, but. Um, later this year, uh, we should be prototyping a hydrogen version of, uh, of Dragonfly. So it looks wow. the same. It's the same footprint, um, um, but it will have a hydrogen cell. Um, and that will give you a byproduct of water. Um, it will give you about 50 to 60 miles of range still. Um, and it will give you a 10 minute recharge time. So zero wow. to maximum in 10 minutes because there's just... We have these little cassettes uh, that go into a kind of coffee-making look, look, looking uh, charging device, um, and there's a there's a chemical reaction that goes on, and then the low-pressure hydrogen goes into those uh, those little cassettes, uh, and they get plugged back into the into the vehicle, and and you know the uh, um, uh, the fuel cell does 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 the rest in terms of providing electricity to the to the electric motors. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's, you know, that, that we should be seeing those, those prototypes later in this year. Um, and then look, we've got, you know, huge, huge numbers of verticals, um, that we're talking to with slight sort of variation requirements of, of the vehicle. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a lot more accessory products, you know, for things like, you know, adding your golf clubs and, and, you know, doing other, <laughs> other elements that you might this want to do. This could be your new golf cart, Sundish. Well, you know, there yeah, you go, exactly, you know. That, that, but, but again, what, what I wanted to be able to do was not have, you know, this unique vehicle that, you know, like, as you say, a golf cart. Okay, people, there are people who can afford to have a golf cart and they, that, they go and play, you know, they live in a golf course community and that sits there. But why not have a vehicle that could do many, many different things? Right. One of them being take your, you know, go on the golf course, but equally you can go and have fun in the hills, you can go to the office, you can, you know, and it's all in one vehicle, not having to buy multiple vehicles, you know. So uh, we're always trying to sort of look for that. Uh, you know, that sustainability uh, element to uh, and then sort of reducing that, that impact. I really appreciate you coming on and telling us all about this. I can't wait to see these in person. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about the launch. What I'm really excited about, I bet the unboxing experience is going to be really cool on this one. I, I must admit, it, 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 yeah, it, it, the unboxing is pretty cool because for the well, most part, people, you know, that that's the first time that they really get to see it. And we actually had a, we did have a customer um in uh, in europe that um has, has has ended up getting a product just for a short period of time because he's kind of a little bit ahead of the curve of everybody <laughs> everybody else only because he's got this uh massive um 
video, music video that's being shot. And, and there's this very famous person that's getting from A to B in the video. And he, and, and he sort of, you know, really insisted on, on having a dragonfly for this super famous person to get from A to B. And we said, <laughs> okay, look, you know, okay. You know, we, we sort of gave in Gets and wore us, wore, wore us down and, 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 and yeah. so on. So, uh, uh, and they saw it actually for the first time I think um, I think this morning or yesterday morning, um, and it was like, oh, you know, there was lots of excitement and no MGs <laughs> going on. So, uh, so we know that that's going to be cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thanks so much for coming on and, and sharing this with us. Um, we're going to keep following this, and I can't wait to to see where you go in the future with this. Thanks so much for coming on, Chris. It's very kind. Really, really great to to see you and Sandesh, and uh, thanks for all your time. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you could, please hit that subscribe button because like I've said so many times before, that's really important. And if you can, give us a like as well. And I will see you in the next one.